Recording in progress. Welcome to the Movie Brothers, everybody. My name is Walter, uh, also Wojo. Oh, my God. I, ha- I don't say Wal- I, Walter is my natural thing now. Nine Walter. years later, everybody. I used to introduce myself as Wojo. Now I introduce myself as Walter on a, on a natural con- basis. Uh, I'm wow. here with the one, the only, our man, JP. It's been nine years since we've done this, folks. Nearly ten. <laughs> nine, nine years. We've come back for the, the centennial. <laughs> so Wait, our 10-year no. reunion. It's like high yes. school. Yes, exactly. Yes. Welcome back. As you can see, oh, JP boy. is uh, in a secret location with a bunch of books. <laughs> I am. I'm in my secret study. Nobody don't like this non disclosed for sure. Don't and I'm, I'm clearly I'm still in New Jersey. Yes. Like, this is clear. I, uh, that's exactly what people picture when they picture New Jersey. That is very true. You're clearly still in New Jersey. So that's, I'm glad you're still there. You haven't left. So that's good. <laughs> 10 years would be uh, 10 years going. Haven't, haven't left this exact spot. It's been all yeah. just in the dark void. Yep. Uh, right next out. to New York city. Just, I could see it from here. It's nice. The Brooklyn <laughs> bridge and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, we're dude, it's been 10 years. But so we initially we were going to talk about Spider-Man, but then we waited too long to do this. And it felt like Spider-Man was just like, well, that's a, that's so passe. So how about we it do is. the Peacemaker show uh, four episodes in? And it's uh, James Gunn is insane is what I've learned. Yes. And God bless him because he's he's doing whatever the hell he wants to. And I respect that because that this show is just insane. I mean, of all the Suicide Squad characters to get their own spinoff show, yeah, Peacemaker. Okay, I yeah, I didn't know what to think of that when I heard that either. It was like because also like when I saw Suicide the Suicide Squad, I remember to put the in front of it. The Suicide Squad, yes, yeah, that was it's very important, folks. The Suicide Squad. When when they did it, I was kind of like, even when the movie came out, I was like, okay, it's an okay movie. It's not horrible. It's not great. It's pretty like. It's fine. It's it's better than the original one, the, the first one they did. But it was very like, uh, but it was very much a movie they would have made like 15, 20 years ago kind of movie. And I, I it was it's fun. Um, it was very fun. Yes. And clearly it didn't take itself too seriously. It was a lot like uh, uh, Deadpool, like where it's like oh. we're doing this where we're, we're not being totally too serious. We're doing like kind of fun stuff with it. But it, it was like put it's King Shark and a giant starfish in there, and why not? I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're we're just. It's like when they stuck Colossus and you know and uh, the Juggernaut in in Deadpool and Deadpool Two. So it's mm. like it didn't take itself too seriously. So it, it made it very fun. And now all of a sudden, like James Gunn had this weird fantasy where he's like, "What if I just did a show about John Cena, most of the time naked in the first few episodes? It's like it's a lot yeah. of nudity. Spoiler what? alert." It's a lot, a lot of him scantily clad for sure. There's a, a lot, lot, of, John a lot of John Cena. Cena. A lot true. of John Cena. Book. There is, uh, man. But whew, boy, this is just I, James Cameron. Just like okay, just from the intro, like I mean, the best intro on television. I want to say that's a, that's an intro that I never skip. I never hit the skip uh, button on that one because it's it's got a, such a nice that dance, man. Yeah, dude. All the choreography at the end. It's great. It, it's it's probably got some of the best uh, best dance choreography I've ever seen in an opener. Yes. Agreed. Yes, for sure. And then it just goes crazy from there. I mean, God bless him. John Cena. I mean, and then he wears the Peacemaker costume in every interview that he does when he goes on TV, too. Like, <laughs> he must really I don't know if he's contractually obligated to do that or not, but or maybe he just really loves Peacemaker. I don't know, but man <laughs> i i think it's just like kind of leaning into it it's kind of a cool thing though it's like the fact that he he went on the pat mcafee show and, and wore it on there right. so it's like <laughs> it's really committing to the character um yes and, and from the beginning again it's such a weird concept you're going to take this like lesser known character that like you, you be, but it, the good thing is it's a lot like what james gunn did with guardians of the galaxy which is bunch of lesser known characters lesser known ip for uh big you know you know this time for dc but previously for marvel this lesser known right. ip that they own and we're just gonna go ahead and have fun with it and we're gonna be kind of like you know funky with it and having fun and chippy which is very james gunn james gunn's always kind of been that way all the way back to slither it's very kind of fun dialogue never takes itself too seriously kind of guy 
a great writer, great director, and great to have him back doing something. It is nice. And his creativity when it comes to all this stuff is just is great, too, because I I do enjoy I'm a big DC fan. You know, I mean, uh, I get my big eye roll when I say like a Superman fan, but I am. And they just don't get me started on what they've done with that. But um, good on him for just going just way off the rails and just choosing random deep cut characters to bring out uh, to use like vigilante like i mean what okay i cool like a, a, um ninja master like <laughs> like just crazy i don't know <laughs> i've never heard of any of these characters but i love it it's fantastic i it, it, yeah that's that's the kind of fun part but that was even the, with the guardians of the galaxy it's like most people never heard of that's Absolute true or any of uh any of the other characters that he was getting to play around with and he makes them like almost household names and i think this especially like this is almost like I actually like this better than I like the Suicide Squad. Like it's mm. and maybe it's because we live in the age of series now. Like movies just don't cut it anymore. There, there's only so much story right. you can tell in a one movie. So now everything is right. like six episodes, eight episodes, 10 episode series. And it just it makes it so like, oh, I get to live with this character for a bit. It's very fun, very uh, enjoyable to get to go ahead and watch uh right from the bat too like you're, you're watching it they flash back to the the original to the movie all the stuff that happened there wakes up and you know he's in the uh in the icu and he's like oh you know like you're all you know you're all better now like after having a building fall on you like that's kind of impressive <laughs> like way to go john cena i knew you were a, a bad i even love like the quippiness of like the, the, all the the what they've been doing with this character is like creating so much backstory you know his his dad is this villain called the white dragon yes. and like very racist I, super villain like right. it, it's kind of like what you would always think a super villain would be is like maybe the super villain should be racist like that was you know, that's a very that's our, that's our big villains nowadays right so. yeah it, it tracks for sure and then the fact that he was traumatized and he was brought up this way basically and his like deep like seated backgrounds that we're getting into you really like care for this character basically you're starting to um really get into it and then you just have these just this off the wall concept of these like <laughs> freaking aliens like i didn't see that coming either like what <laughs> what i never heard of the the butterflies i have no idea what's going on with them you get this mini spaceship and they <laughs> They're like invasion of the body snatcher situation. I don't know. It's crazy. Well, and then like they hint at like, oh, actually, like maybe the butterflies aren't that bad. Like, at least that's right. what I was getting from the ninja dude. From yes, that was the 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 setup is they they aren't who you think they are. Um, so who knows where that's gonna go too. I mean, you'd think so. Maybe the people that they're kind of like hitching a ride with aren't necessarily like taken over by them or what have you maybe they're being helped or something like that i don't know but it's it's very interesting for sure absolutely and the supporting cast is great too i like his team the team around them coming back from suicide squad is great <laughs> i like yeah. that he calls uh, him dye beard is hilarious <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> and apparently that apparently um, came from the guy having actually having to dye his beard to do that role <laughs> so it's like they were just like well let's just put that in now <laughs> it's perfect yes and they're dynamic and getting together as a a weird like not suicide squad obviously but like trying to get together kind of on the same page and try and learn and go from there it's just crazy and i love it it's fantastic a lot of people i've heard i don't like it though i've heard uh who some negative reviews i don't what know who human being that doesn't like I, like the i don't i'm not gonna name names I don't, <laughs> who are these <laughs> people who like, I, I haven't heard one person anonymous. The, yeah. I w this is one of those things. You know what it is? I, I was waiting for like the next. Like, so I blew through Cobra Kai. Like I blew it hard, everybody. Mm. I, I the, the fourth season came out and I shot my load with that. Like in like five hours, it was gone. This became an NC-17 mm. uh, show while, over <laughs> no, the 10 years, that. everybody. Whoa. Um, <laughs> it's gone. I, I flew through that so quickly because I'm like, you know, you uh, it. It, 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 you eat it so qu it's such it's such a quick uh show to go through they're only Half 30 minute episodes, episodes. Yeah. right but mm -hmm. 
now, you know, I, I, like, so I blew through that. I'm waiting for the boys. They announced the boys. That's not coming out till June. And then, like, okay. I heard about Peacemaker, and I'm like, what, how is this going to be fun? How is this going to be interesting? You watch that first episode, and you go, okay, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm good. In. Yeah, right. And then you're and watching. Got- and then, apparently, I see a lot of Peacemaker's ass. Like, a lot of John Cena butt. Um, <laughs> some titties in this show as well. Um, some- a lot of nudity. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, the whole everybody. point of the Movie Brothers now is we're just telling you where all the nudity is and everything. <laughs> this took a real hard turn. <laughs> oh, boy. That 10 um, years in Jersey has really made you a hard man, Woj. Jeez, man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Goodness. All right. <laughs> um, um. <laughs> no, it's it's a weird, like, it's it, it's a fun show. It's a weird show. The mm. the, the the vigilante is such a weird character. Yes. He he seems to have no problem killing anybody for anything. Like, oh, right. he's racist, kill him. Uh, kill him. Aliens, kid, kill him. A kid alien, kill him. Did murder automatically. Hang on. Don't worry, buddy. I'll take the shot for you. I'll kill these small children that look like regular children. And I'll just murder them with a sniper rifle. It's fine. And whistle while I do it. It's fine. I'm like, all right. <laughs> kind of a psychopath, but all right. Cool. <laughs> well, and as they say in the show, they're fighting an alien invasion. You kind of need a psychopath. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And when he mentions, when Vigilante mentioned, like, if I see somebody trying to rob a bank, I kill him. If I try and see somebody doing something wrong, I kill them. If they're going on graf- doing graffiti on the wall, I murder them. I kill them too. Like little that little subtle thing, like it, that they slipped in there it was like, oh, all right. You just take any sort of crime and wrongdoing and just murder them. That that works, I guess. It's kind of peacemaker. No wonder they kind of get along for sure. <laughs> Well, and the weird thing is Peacemaker starts out being that character. I'll kill anybody. I'll kill anybody. And then you kind of see him choke. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and especially when it came to the ugly kid. He right. really didn't yeah. want to kill the ugly kid. No. <laughs> he had it worse on his own. He doesn't deserve to die. Yes. <laughs> your your, oh, your life is, ba- is as bad as it is. I don't think I should kill you. It's kind of where he was going. Right. Ah, you, you don't need to exactly. die. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just been, I don't know where it's going to go either. Like, are they going to connect it back to like a bigger, the bigger DC universe somehow? Or they, it's going to be just one one season and done? Like, it's going to be interesting to see what happens for sure. Like how it. Well, that's the thing I'm wondering about is uh, first off, just yeah. give James Gunn everything. Right. Just yeah, make James I mean, Gunn the head of the, the DC universe. Oh, absolutely. Yes. His, he should his, be the. His, Kevin Feige of D- DC for sure. Yeah. Cause he's way better than Zack Snyder as far as a writer goes. Like I think Zack Snyder is a very good visual director. Mm-hmm. Um, but like story wise, he's, it's always kind of been his like and perform and getting performances. He was, I, I, he's gotten better with getting performances out of people, but he's not like a great writer. He's a really like visual and action director and very like get a great visual element to all this stuff. But he was never like my favorite guy if I had to pick somebody to like as far as come up with story and as far as being a writer. I don't know if he was always the best writer. He was a very good visual director. So with James, I I think when you're doing something this big, you really need somebody who's a great writer and and then give it out to people to kind of go ahead and execute. I know he doesn't like letting other people execute his work. That was a big conversation as to why he got into directing was, you know, he would write. He wrote a whole bunch of things a few years ago. And they were, uh, I forget what movie it was that he wrote. He, he wrote like two very big movies, like in the early 2000s. And his mm. like name is tied to them. And I, I have to look it up. But uh, basically, like, he didn't like the fact that like, oh, those, I, I like those movies and how they came out. But that was, oh, Scooby-Doo was one of them. Like the, yeah, the he did. Movie yes, he wrote, wrote Scooby-Doo, the, uh, the island, the monster, uh, the island one with the theme park. I think which, he wrote. which if you know his humor, then you're kind of like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. It tracks. It absolutely tracks. Yes. <laughs> Another crazy movie. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Like, but that's the thing. Like, is John Cena going to stick around for another, you know, like do a, you know, a six movie, you know, deal with DC to play Peacemaker throughout? I mean, it's going to be interesting to see for sure how it plays out. Well, here's like with that, like, especially because it's very short, sh- like episodes, it's mm-hmm. like, it, it seems like you know, the episodes themselves, but the season is short, like it's only six or seven episodes, I think, right? Six to eight or something. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So since it's so short, it it's probably not a huge commitment any more so than doing a regular movie. He clearly likes doing it. Well, like just yeah, the fact that he agreed to. to do the show was right. uh, was probably enough to to like sell a, like sell him on like oh I like doing this it's fun maybe he's tired of having his ass looked at but again he's he's really promoting it hard wearing the suit everywhere exactly yeah he's I mean like you said it's it's uh, he's got us fooled if he doesn't like playing the character for sure unless like you said he's somehow very contractually obligated to wear the suit everywhere he goes almost uh, which I don't think is the case but. <laughs> Be, it would be uh, very know. be very new if I heard that. Like, I don't know anybody else just to wear their costume everywhere. Yeah, imagine like Ben Affleck having to go to all these interviews and wear the Bat costume, Batman costume the whole time. See, I would have loved to It'd see Batman in in a James Gunn Batman movie. Well, you know, speaking of Batman, I mean, wow, this last episode that was some fun uh, name dropping that they had going on there with the Joker and the, and the Riddler. And then he's like, no, that man's a pussy. He doesn't kill. He just puts him in jail and then he lets them back out so they can escape and kill more people. You know what? How many people have Batman killed inadvertently by letting the Joker just put him back in jail and then he just escapes and he kills more people. What? Like, of course he doesn't kill people because he's the worst. It's like, I was like, that's the greatest argument i've heard ever like it's true i mean kind of right i don't know is it i don't know <laughs> well the world building just through dialogue is kind of fun like they they named right. aquaman in the first episode aquaman yeah yeah oh, that's he fucks right. fish that, that aqua that whole aquaman back and forth like that was no, not aquaman why would women <laughs> fine why? fuck girls fine fuck fish that's where i draw a line that's, and he's like why would uh why would that guy in the internet lie to me? There, he would have no reason to lie to me. Like, it's hilarious. I, I, but you're right. It is. It's interesting that he's still involved in the. You, you know, the DC universe is out there. You know, and he's just a guy, basically. Peacemaker is just a regular human. You know, that's trying to do this thing. He's like, people don't think he's a superhero either way. You know what I mean? So, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I will. It's also, it, again, it's like, it's a very good character driven show as well. It's very mm-hmm. like you're seeing a like how he sees himself and like clearly he has issues. Like it's like he's dealing with the trauma from his, his childhood. He's dealing with like the, you know, the elements of how people perceive him, him killing Rick Flagg, a guy who is mm-hmm. like kind of like a hero in in right. this universe and it's like well you know like he killed this guy he, and he's doing it out of loyalty to it's all like it's kind of impressive like all the different psychological elements they go through especially end of the last episode he's literally lying on the floor and they're doing this musical montage Crying. and it's just he's, yeah yeah it's and you're seeing this big walloping like john cena just like like also kind of like breaking it, down <laughs> like drumming it out and crying and like and and his best friend it really does like uh, like everybody eagle everybody eagle. wants an eagle for a best friend right like i mean eagle is the star of the show for sure james gunn himself has said that eagle is absolutely the star of the peacemaker series for sure i mean come on Can't get I mean, it's also that. like is it cg it's clearly cgi right it's clearly a cgi uh, i mean eagle I, I i'm pretty sure that would be impressive if they got a real all that eagle emotion there. that comes out of it it's kind of can like you, it has to be cgi this is like, well this is a couple of questions that come up from the peacemaker right so that that brings up a question can an eagle actually give you a hug number one if it's not cgi uh, number two um does actually losing your pinky toe really affect your the way you walk Dude, that was that was a, is, a, even like their relationship. I you know, if right. people have ever been through that kind of a situation where you're dealing with friendship and one person's clearly more like, Oh, I want you to be my best friend, and the other one's like, Well, you're a friend, okay. Like it's a little calm down, buddy. Like it's okay. Like we could be like it, it's kind of like there's clearly a dynamic where one guy wants to be the best friend. And then like John Cena's like, uh, you know, peacemaker's like, Oh, well, I got I got the bird. Why do I need you? Right. Yeah. No, Eagly is clearly my best friend. And they even said like, oh, no, he's met in that meeting. He's like, Eagly, you mean? Yeah, he's his best friend. He's mentioned it multiple times before <laughs> that Eagly is his best friend. <laughs> oh, OK. I was talking about it vigilante, but that's fine. But like, you're right. It's just and <laughs> he like lets him get tortured. 
like that whole thing. Like, no, I'm not telling you. Like, as the other, we almost seemed excited tortured. about it. Like he was I, like, "Yeah, go ahead, hilarious. torture him. Go right ahead, do it, do it. I don't care, do it." It's like, uh, no torture. <laughs> it's like, dude, calm down. It's kind of funny, but also, and then he gets mad. Like, are you mad at me? Like when they're driving and they're just having that conversation, are you still mad at me for letting him torture you? No, no, it's fine. And it's like, well, you sound like you're mad at me. Like, it's just, man, what is going on in the show? <laughs> yeah, like again, like how they deal with character dynamics, and then not only like the the, the Adebayo, the her her whole background, yes. her story. But she, it's so mm-hmm. weird because she had she didn't want to shoot somebody to kill them, but she was totally fine with setting uh, the sociopath after, you know, uh, Peacemaker's dad. That's true. Yeah, but that's not she said she she hinted at it. So she's not like she never killed anyone before. She never pulled the trigger like shot at anyone before. So that's like I feel like she can in her head she goes oh well that's inadvertent like she's not exactly killing them directly <laughs> so it's, it's incidental fine, I guess. she just You're set right. him up on the path to go ahead and murder him right. which is yeah. kind of like yeah that, that's yeah okay like uh i guess you're just i don't know <laughs> that kind of that i always kind of there's sometimes where they do step out of character a little bit i got a, the one character i like i like economist but i feel like a lot of the stuff he does is almost kind of too stupid like the, the white dragon. I, I, I switched his fingerprints with the white dragon's fingerprints. Yeah. Why? Oh, Why? well, you know, like, because I wanted I, you to. Were, I, you, were, you were going to the bathroom. I didn't know what to do. You, did, you can't text me. I'm supposed to tell you that. Like, I didn't know what to do. I panicked. Like, that's when he stri- switched the registration to his dad's in the car. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you could have chosen anyone. Yeah, that's why I didn't like that. Like things like that, the whole thing of like even like the quip about like, well, I wanted to make sure we're all talking about eagerly. It, it's, I mean, that kind of played into his character pretty well, at least because it sounds like he always wants to be like the smartest guy in the room kind of deal. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I feel like with with how they the, his character still, I it, it's kind of the least interesting character of the bunch. I think everybody else is kind of cool. Um, you still want to know more about uh, about Murray? Is Murray? Yes. Is that how you want to learn? It? Um, and you want to learn more about now? Well, wow. I mean, now he, you know, he's a butterfly now too. Yeah. So, like, is he like a defective butterfly? Is he like or, out there and he's like he's trying to fight it? Factions of butterflies, maybe. I don't know. Like, some are good and some aren't. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe we'll he see, doesn't I like guess. the butterflies and he's just like a butterfly is like fuck the other butterflies. I mean, yeah, they're like you said, there's different factions maybe in the butterfly hierarchy. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see what goes on there. Cause I don't know. Or maybe a butterfly escaped. Was it him in the beginning and then he became a butterfly at the house? Or what when they went to the senator's place? Or was he the butterfly the whole time? Oh, we don't know yet. We'll see, I guess. I would figure he was a butterfly the whole time because he's the guy who brought the information to them. That's true. And mm-hmm. not only that, it's like up until literally the point where we saw him in the house, every scene up to that point, you've at least like he still sounded like it. Like, it, like there was like, oh, like why would he if if he was still part of the invasion, why would he be afraid about, you know, White Dragon getting out? Like then he'd just be sabotaging them from that point. He wouldn't be he wouldn't care about Peacemaker being involved or uh vigilante right that's true yeah i mean i like i said i'm excited to see where it goes and where because i expected to go maybe fully off the rails at some point not that it hasn't already but like just go insane by the end because you saw that map and then it was like the (laughs) the butterflies are literally everywhere the entire world they're just like popping up everywhere so it's not like this one little isolated thing where just their team can somehow take care of the butterflies. So I don't know how all of that is going to play in. I don't. So it's going to be fun to see for sure. Yeah. I'm excited for the next episode. I'm, I think that's uh, finding out more about the butterflies and then kind of getting to, to take the steps forward and figure out the, the rest of it. Um, Murray and, and peacemaker and, um, and what's her name too? The, uh, Oh, Harcourt. Which I thought was oh, hardcore yeah. was her name Harcourt, hard Harcourt, Harcourt and economist, economos. This is 
They're just like weirdly spelled. We're names. professionals, everyone. Trust us. We, we yeah, know. Right. Go- <laughs> it's a strange. I, I love it. It's a great show. It's. Uh, it, I, I can't wait to see more of it. And I want to see James Gunn do more with DC properties. Oh yes, I want to see them to do, do more of this kind of stuff. Yes, I'm excited for just to transition it with that. Just in DC, speaking about DC, the future of DC. So like. I mean, you're going into like Black Adam, which is I cannot wait to see what happens there. Like we've been waiting forever for The Rock to come in and be a superhero. But and that's a project he's been trying to get for 20, 25 years or something like that. Crazy. Before Marvel even started the MCU, he wouldn't he want to play Black Adam. So it's going to be absolutely insane. So I'm excited for that. You know, the new Flash movie they're doing flashpoint which is going to be michael keaton's batman back so and batgirl and just craziness so and then you got uh, aquaman 2 which amber heard was just fired Did i didn't that? hear that no yes yeah they fired her because mm-hmm, the, the petition got to like 20 million people signed the petition so wow. i guess they, i just saw that yeah so it's interesting to see what happens with that but dc's a lot weird. of good movies I never like I don't expect anything anymore. And like also oh, like they're weird yeah. with like what counts as DC extended universe, what counts as this cuz like Doom Patrol isn't part of the same universe as even Titans. Even though like they make it a, an well, appearance in an episode, but apparently like they're well, not they're, like it's the multiverse. So the, it's the, it's the multiverse. Didn't they they established that <laughs> so it, now you talk about DC, you got to go to the, like oh boy, we're going to go off the tangent here, but um like the the TV shows, so yeah. the the CW verse, right, with Arrow and Flash and all them, uh, they're in their own, like through that they had their own crisis through Crisis on Infinite Earths. You saw yeah. part of it was you saw Doom Patrol, you saw the Titans, you saw like all these other properties. They all exist in different in the multiverse. They're just different multiverses basically, and they're all coexisting. So. They all <laughs> there are two flashes, obviously, because you got um, you got the flash from the DC movie in the flash, the CW TV show, which is one of the greatest cameos, I feel, in TV history, like one of the twists in a, one of the best twists in the show to like you would never have expected that. Like that was so cool to see. Um, so that's all it's all connected now. So we'll see what happens. Apparently, Flashpoint is supposed to do a bunch of stuff. So <laughs> the multiverse and everything, and we'll see what happens there. But I'm excited to see it. I hope they don't screw it up. <laughs> just, they probably will. <laughs> oh, we'll just take it one day at a time. Take it one Peacemaker episode at a time. And uh, yes. I, that, that's that been our review of uh, the Peacemaker one through four episodes. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll touch base a, a little, get, uh, you know, when we move forward with all this, the, the rest of the series. And uh, hopefully get to do a couple more of these sometime soon, man. It, it's been fun. It's been a while. It was. It was fun. It has been. It's been too long. Let's not go into the 10 years before our next episode, okay? 10 years between episodes sounds like, it's like wow, they, they release these things very, very infrequently. We've had an epic return. Let's not wait that long before the next one. <laughs> yeah. Next next big thing, uh, maybe Book of Boba Fett, maybe Cobra Kai, maybe something. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll be back to you. This has been the JP, uh, the JP brothers, the, the movie brothers with JP and Wojo. <laughs> we forgot our own name. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs>